So let's draw what the mechanism would be uh, in this case. Let's discuss this together now. Now, first of all, we have to decide uh, who would be a good nucleophile here. Who is the nucleophile? And maybe it's not that obvious who the nucleophile is. Um, there's no one here that would be a classically good nucleophile that we've learned about before. We know that neutral halogens are not good nucleophiles. So now we're going to learn something new. Carbon-carbon pi bonds are nucleophilic. So we just need to have that in your notes. Carbon-carbon pi bonds are nucleophilic. Um, previously, we always tried to say that nucleophiles were at Remember, does a nucleophile tend to be at the head of the arrow or the tail? Nucleophiles? Usually the tail. No, the, the head. Yeah. The tail. The tail. Now, does oh, a nucleophile yeah. donate yeah. or receive electrons? Receive. Donates. Oh, donate. Donates. That's like donates so. electrons. So should it be at the head or the tail? The tail. The tail. So is a nucleophile someone who tends to have positive or negative charges? Negative. All right, this is something you definitely want to keep reviewing until it seems like second nature. We tend to put nucleophiles, things with negative or partial negatives of tails. And we tend to put positives, or delta positives, at heads. And pretty much all the reactions we've seen so far that weren't radical mechanisms, we explained that we put something negative or delta negative at the tail, and something positive or delta positive at the head. But now we are breaking that pattern. We just need to also memorize Carbon-carbon double bonds are also nucleophilic, even though we can't explain that based on the charges. It's not too surprising because we know electrons would rather be in sigma bonds than pi bonds. So the electrons in this pi bond would like to get out and form a sigma bond. Sigma bonds are more stable than pi bonds. Um, so that's the explanation for why that pi bond is nucleophilic. When possible, you'd like to exchange the, uh, the pi bond. So now we have a new thing that goes to the tail, carbon-carbon pi bonds, and we just have to memorize that because we can't explain it based on the charges. All right, um, so should this be at the head or the tail? Yeah. All right, so I think uh, maybe I've been putting this on the wrong end of the arrow. So we'll put this here at our tail. Now, it makes total sense for the hydrogen to be at the head. Why is it reasonable for this hydrogen to be at the head? Because it's partially charged because it's less, it's more like less electronegative than the VR. So this would be delta positive or delta, delta negative? Delta positive. Okay, so that totally fits into our scheme that we put delta positives here. Now, don't forget, we can't leave these electrons stranded. So we've got to put them over here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw the product from this. Uh, now, there's some complications here. It's going to attach to the less substituted, so there's a carbocation in the more. Yeah, let me change the original molecule and make something simpler here. So I wanted to go for something like this, say. Yeah, so uh, we'll attack here. Um, so, uh, so you were going to say, so the question is, notice that this kind of arrow is ambiguous. Because uh, it doesn't tell us which of these atoms is going to get the carbocation. It doesn't tell who's forming the new bond and who's getting the carbocation. I think you just had an explanation for that. So who did you say would get the carbocation? Um, the more, the, the more substituted, so it can be... Um, more stable because tertiary is better than like secondary. Oh. That's right. So we want to form the more stabilized carbocation. So the options are two options. We can either put the carbocation on the left or we can put the carbocation on the right. Uh, and as I think you were saying, this is the more stable carbocation because it's more substituted. Um, why does substitution stabilize carbocations? 
This has more alkyl groups. Are alkyl groups electron donating or withdrawing? Donating? Yeah, and that just has to be memorized. Another thing we just have to memorize. Carbon chains, alkyl groups are electron donating. That's uh, another really key fact in the course that we really have to make a prominent flashcard of and memorize. One way to explain that very roughly is um, you would expect a carbon chain to be more electron donating than a hydrogen because a carbon chain has way more electrons than a hydrogen. So the question is, who's going to stabilize this positive charge uh, more, these carbon chains um, or these hydrogens? Well, carbon chains have way more electrons. Um, but whether we understand it or not, we have to memorize alkyl groups are electron donating. All right, so that means that the, um, this is going to be more stabilized with more alkyl groups. Substitution stabilizes positive charges. All right, so... So it does, the H does go to the least substituted one. Uh, yeah, the electrophile goes to the less substituted yeah. carbon, which um, allows the carbocation to be formed on the more substituted carbon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, this is not going to be the important product. This is going to be the important product down here. So we'll focus on this important, more substituted product. Do you still get both products like you did in a bunch of other things, or...? Yeah, I think you would get both, but this is the major product. Um, now, let's see if we can draw the next step. I'm not sure if it would Why is that reasonable? Because it's a nuclear file. Yeah, it's got a negative charge, so that's right. Now, don't forget the positive charge here. The charge is the most important part of the picture. So here's where our carbocation is over here. All right, so going through the reaction, this would be the next step. Now this is a completely reasonable arrow. Why is it reasonable for the bromine to be at the tail? Because it has a negative charge. And why is it reasonable for this carbon to be at the head? Because it's got a positive charge. That's the way we like to explain these. I was complaining at the beginning about how a neutral halogen is not a nucleophile. But a negative halogen is. So this has produced the, the nucleophile we need for the next step. Okay, um, so now we're going to get uh, our final products here. Okay, so that will give us um, our final product. Um, are either of these stereocenters? Um, so we don't care about the stereochemistry. Uh, the, I originally drew this so that it was going to have stereocenters, but I didn't want to get into that. So I changed this so that there was not going to be any stereocenters. Um, the only thing that matters here um, is that we put the bromine in the right place. The main issue that would be tested for this reaction is not so much the stereochemistry as this is what's called regiochemistry. Regiochemistry is when an atom can end up in more than one position, or when the reaction can take more place, take place at more than one place. Well, the regiochemistry here is that the halogen can end up either on on either of two of these carbons here. Well, you expect it to end up on the uh, more substituted because it has to attack the carbocation. Um. Do you always expect it to be trans of what you added? Say again? Do you always expect it to be trans of what you added? Trans? Like cis and trans? You don't have cis and trans. Yeah, now in this case, okay. in this case there's no stereochemistry because okay, we didn't form stereocenters. Uh, if there was stereochemistry, uh, let's go through what that would be. Well, no, first of all, the it's hydrogen. Not, isn't mm -hmm. it not SN2 because it's a tertiary carbon? Uh, let's see. Well, yeah, we're certainly not talking about SN1 and SN2 anymore. Although I suppose this kind of looks like uh, the last step of an SN1. This is a completely different thing. Yeah, because after all, SN2 and SN1 doesn't have anything to do with double bonds. All right. uh, this is a whole new reaction. This is a whole new reaction. Uh, SN1 and SN2 has nothing to do with double bonds. Although, the last step here was, the, was what we would have for the last half of an SN1. In the last half of an SN1, a nucleophile attacks a carbocation. So in that sense, uh, this is kind of like uh, SN1 over here. Does this kind of reaction have a name? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, what's the general type here? I think we talked about this. Yeah, this is addition. So at the beginning of the session, we saw why is this called addition? What is an addition because reaction? Because you're adding two atoms to break the double bond. Right. And you might Good. be confused that it's a removal of a pi bond, but it's not. Like, you'd say addition, and it might confuse you because you know how like E2 is elimination, but you're actually like, adding a double bond. 
So don't break the key for me. Yeah. Having two atoms to break the Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, that's a, uh, that definitely how we want to put it. So a addition reaction is a reaction that removes a pi bond by adding two atoms to the pi bond. This is addition because we're removing a pi bond by adding two atoms to the pi bond. Which atoms are we adding? The hydrogen and the bromine. 